Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in live. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome to you as well. You can certainly let Facebook know your name. I see Facebook user here. Hello, hello. Uh, glad you caught a live one. I, there is a, I've never done it, but there is an option under the video on Facebook where you can authorize it to show your name. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to do that, feel free. Hi, Cindy Ann. Good to see you. So glad. Thanks for being here nice and early. And Mary's always here. Thanks, Mary. Good to see you. Happy, happy Monday to you too. And we've got Andrew here. Yes, I did have a good weekend. Hope you did as well. And Gustav. Hello, people. Hello, Gustav. So uh, good to see everybody. I hope everyone's having a good start to their week. Uh, it's Monday. And uh, if you are teaching Chinese students, Wednesday is Children's Day, so you can wish your students a uh, happy Children's Day on Wednesday. From what I understand, most of the younger students in China, I think they have a day off, but some of my older students in middle school said that uh, they don't get a day off on Wednesday. So we'll see. On Wednesday, I teach four students, and two of them are in elementary school, two are in middle school. So uh, I'm not sure if I'll have some cancellations then or not. But good to see everybody. Uh, if you've got any questions, please feel free to use the chat. You can say hi. It's always fun to see where folks are tuning in from. And uh, if you're uh, watching the replay, welcome to you. Uh, you can use the comment section below to, uh, to say hi or to ask a question. We're going to be talking with Sarah uh, in a, sorry, Sarah Walker <laughs> in a few minutes. And uh, all about online games and creating digital products. Uh, she has created a really cool website over the years that hosts a lot of resources for teachers. So we're going to get into that, ask her some questions about um, using games in your classroom. I'm not someone that uses a lot of games in my classroom, and the games that I do use are really simple. So I'm, I'm really excited to learn more about how to effectively use games in my classroom, and I hope that you get a lot of value from that as well. And maybe just learn about another resource that you could use if you want to for introducing games into your classroom. So great, we've got uh, tuning in from Mexico. Oh, Andrew's tuning in from Mexico, but originally from New Zealand. Okay, you are a globetrotter as well, like me. Most of you know that I live in Bangkok, Thailand. I've actually lived overseas for 13 years. And uh, yeah, I love it. And online teaching really affords the ability to do that. So it's such a flexible job. All right, good. So without further ado, let's welcome Sarah to the stream here. Hi, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks so much for uh, coming on and chatting to us about online games. I'm really excited to get into that. But yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you to introduce yourself. Let, it, let everyone yeah. know where you're from. OK, well, I'm from England, um, the southeast of England, a town called Eastbourne. But yeah, like you, I'm also a globe trotter. I'm in Athens at the moment. Um, so yeah. Cool. So when did you move to Athens? Well, I'm, I've only been here a month. I'm leaving on Wednesday, going up to Bulgaria. So yeah, I, I stay, you know, one to three months in, in one place at the moment. Yeah. I, I, I used to do that and then I got a cat. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't that's have good. any pets, so. <laughs> so uh, that's great. So where do you consider like home base then? Um, the UK, yeah. Uh, my Well, my business is registered in the UK, so all of my official things are there. Um, yeah. And I go back, yeah, I would say I go back probably maybe once every three, four months, so. Okay, cool. But currently mm -hmm. in Athens, going to Bulgaria and then going back to Athens or? uh i don't know to be honest yeah usually i'm a planner but um yeah this year is a little bit unsure i know i'm staying in bulgaria for a couple of months and then probably back to the uk for a, a few weeks in august and then after that i'm not sure so let's see <laughs> you're like a true digital nomad then aren't you <laughs> that's I great Cool. So tell us, like, I know you're an online teacher and you've got an online business that supports with resources for teachers. So tell us about like how you what's your on, what's your teaching background? What's your online teaching experience like? Yeah. OK, well, so I started maybe I would say 18 years ago, quite a long time when I was 
20, I think I did a CELTA course, so <laughs> a long time ago. And yeah, I did a CELTA when I was 20, 21, and then I moved to Italy. And I worked there for maybe three years in a language school and in state schools. Okay. Um, and then I had a moment where I thought, okay, um, what am I doing? Where am I going? Do I want to continue teaching in this way? You know, what are the options? Um, yeah. So in the end, I decided to move back to England and I did a degree in education, okay. um, which turned out great because I, yeah, I learned so many things about how we learn, what, what we learn, you know, the culture, the, the history, the politics, the philosophy. So yeah, it was a three year degree and I did most of my second year in India. So I had a really amazing experience um, teaching over there. Okay. And okay. yeah, and then after my degree, I sort of, I went back with the idea, I think of opening a language school or, an, or a school in general. Um, so I went back to Italy after that. Um, and yeah, I just, I think I just had a completely different approach of all the things that I'd learned. And I started, yeah, I started using games a lot more. Um, I started just um, prioritizing um, how much the students enjoy themselves and creating, um, yeah, like a happy space for learning. I think that was more my priority after, after that. And I worked for a freelance, as a freelance teacher, uh, for a few years. And then I started a summer camp business and then I thought, ah, oh, I, I made a website for my summer camp business Okay. and okay. I, yeah, I had a really good time making it. And so that, that kind of sparked my interest in, in websites and online things. And because I'd sort of, uh, I was working as a freelance teacher, so I, I create my, all my own courses and the summer camps and stuff. And, and a lot of it was to do with just speaking as much as possible and like communication games, having fun, like activities. I found it quite difficult to find games for my lessons and yeah because i have a, a background in in art and design i thought well i'm gonna make them so that was kind of the start of my of my journey putting together you know the the online yeah. and the resources the materials and yeah so that's that's kind of so when you say you were working for as a freelancer were you, is that, are you talking about teaching online? You were teaching uh, So I didn't start teaching online until mm, 2018. So m most of it before was classroom teaching. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so that was, I, I'd rented a room in a community center. So I would have my own classes there and okay. do courses in schools. And then, yeah, I didn't start teaching online until around 2018, 2019. Did you do the, I don't want to say traditional route of working for a company or like, were you just right off the bat, someone that jumped in and did this on your own? How did you start? Um, so I did work for a company for, I don't know how long, maybe nine months. I worked for VivaLing. I don't know if you've ever heard. Of I have heard of VivaLing. Yeah. 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 So I, that was my first online job. Now, actually, I just um, teach students that I know from Italy. So, um, yeah, I still have a few online lessons. The website takes up most of my time, but I, I have, yeah, a few, few lessons, but with students that I know, that I've known for, <laughs> okay. for a while. So I wanted to, I didn't ask you this or suggest I was going to ask you about the, the student stuff, but I think a lot of teachers who are, you know, marketing themselves and trying to build their own independent teaching business struggle with that side of it. But I like how you just kind of started with, you know, students that you knew already in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and has that been a, has that, what has worked for maybe growing your student base or are you looking to, or do they refer you to others or how do you sort of, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really looking to teach more. I like teaching the, the the hours that I have. I mean, it's it's not a lot of hours each week, but I like it because obviously I'm making these online games now, so I like to test them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think 
yeah once you have one family and they're and they like it then they they recommend you to the friend and then they recommend you to the friend. so i sure. think that's kind of how yeah. yeah i mean that's how i i did it i i've never marketed myself as a, an online teacher so okay so mary says wow you've been following a very creative path <laughs> cindy says um buona sera sera and we've got oh. Julie in California, <laughs> living in Medellin. Yeah, so Medellin, as you would know, is also really yeah, it's popular a hot nomad yeah. mm -hmm. And also, I, you know, we've talked about Chiang Mai in, in Thailand here, mm -hmm. although I've never lived there for any like length of time. There's a lot of people there teaching online and um, you know working remotely and and things like that. So great, thanks for sharing all about your background and stuff. It's really cool. I think it's interesting to hear yeah. what. You know how teach everyone sort of has their own path and um, arrives at teaching differently, and especially with online teaching, so many of us, especially folks that follow me and watch um, my videos, um, started with companies, especially with the big ones in China, like VIP yeah. Kid. I'm sure you'd heard about those, mm. um, and now they're creating their own lessons, or they're using pre-made curriculum, or they're finding their own resources. Um, and I think using games is such a great way to build engagement in your classroom and to have more fun with your students. Um, so I wanted to ask you a little bit um, about that. Um, yeah. So you um, you create resources for teachers. Can you tell us a little bit about sort of what you what you create for teachers first? And then we'll dig into a little bit about the how you use the games. Yeah, so um, I so I mainly teach young learners. Um, so sort of basic so the games are more for younger children um and i just yeah like like i said they're more for getting children to speak as much as possible um so a lot of card games a lot of conversation starters um board games that you can use in a lot of different ways so maybe you a, a card pops up and you can say you can say oh can you give me a sentence can you give me a negative can you ask a question maybe i can ask you a question um so they're designed to be versatile for for level and lots of different topics um but yeah mainly just convert um, communication based so yeah lots of talking and vocabulary but yeah uh, at the moment so i should say first of all that they're fairly new um so if anybody wants to visit the site and contact me with some feedback or suggestions that would be great very much welcomed um so yeah at the moment there are about 20 games um and yeah, more to come for sure. Like I've got millions of ideas and millions of, uh, of things that I'd like to do. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, yeah, there's some simple word games, um, card games, board games, uh, things that you can sort of create a story, create a character, create a monster, these kind of things that just okay. gets children, you know, speaking, describing, um, yeah. that kind That's of great. thing. So when I think when teachers sometimes think about games in the classroom, maybe a lot of us are teaching a 30 minute class, a 25 minute mm -hmm. class or, or longer or whatever. And it's like, we've got so much material to get through and I can't even begin to think about how to use a game. Can you tell us a little bit about how you use the games in your classroom and is it what maybe what percentage of time is spent using the games? Do you use them as a, as like a prompt in the beginning or a filler at the end or in the middle or like how what does it look like for you and do you have any tips for teachers around how do you how they could maybe get started using games like this in their classroom and then we'll yeah. look at them we will look at the games <laughs> okay probably <laughs> people are saying i want to see what it, what they look like so yeah let's let's yeah. maybe talk about just how to use them um so i use them throughout i think my i think my method is definitely uh, have the most fun possible, but I think I'm I'm lucky in the sense that I don't have to follow any course book, or I I kind of can do you know set my lessons up the way I want. Obviously, sure. yeah, they're not um, practicing for an exam or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I yeah I'm lucky in the sense that I can just 
play games all the time with my <laughs> with okay, my wow. with my students. And I think for me, yeah, that's always been an important part to make sure that they that they look forward to the lesson because they know they're going to have a good time and um, that they just really love English, you know. And then it kind of sets them up for you know being a lifelong learner of always having good memories of learning English. So I am guilty of using all <laughs> all sorts of all games. games. Okay. All the games, yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah, someone... with that in mind, I think, sorry. Go ahead. I was just telling you ah. before about how I keep cutting people off. You speak and then I'll finish. But yeah, I, I think that, um, yeah, you can use them in the, in the beginning to introduce a topic. But I think mainly, I mean, they're all different. You can have a look. But um, yeah, lots of sort of conversation starters. Well, conversation in the sense of conversations with young learners are a bit different to conversations with adults, but um, a prompt to, yeah, to start using language in, in sentences. Um, but yeah, there are word games where if you want to practice um, spelling and doing, you know, matching things and, and things like that. So hopefully there is a bit of everything. Um, but as I yeah. say, it's early, early days and hopefully in the future, well, not hopefully, definitely in the future, there'll be a lot more. Um, yeah, no, I love what you're doing. I, I think anyone that's like aspiring to create their own things, offer them as a digital product or something to sell. I think it's just the, the internet allows so much of that now and it's just exciting what's possible. So yes, definitely you will create more and build your computer <laughs> and all those great things. Mary says, I find games great with slower learners those who need to go over the same stuff different ways. Yeah. yeah. And um, we've got Poland in the house. Hello. And Brazil. Um, Cindy Ann can relate. She was born in Australia, grew up in Canada. And hey, Julie in Florida. Good to see you, my friend. So yeah, the um, I wanted to ask you about sort of use of the games because, as I said, some people might struggle with like, well, you know, when do I have time? I've got to get through this mm -hmm. curriculum or I've got to, depending on your niche. I mean, I was just thinking while you were speaking that, if someone's niche or specialty is like conversation and, and that's what your student wants to work on, a lot of your games are really good for that. Like mm -hmm. just sentence starters, prompts, creating stories. I mean, you could really create like a lesson out of one or two of these games, I, I think. Wouldn't yeah, you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I think even... it's also great for if you've got, you know, shy students, games are, are amazing for you know, instead of um, having to talk or say something on their own, but to, to use it as a game, I think it makes it, um, yeah, yeah, it makes students more confident as well, which is great. Great. Now I want to ask you about the nitty gritty tech stuff. How do you, how did you, how do you make digital products? Like not even just the games, but all of your stuff. Like okay. what kind of so, yeah. you If you look on the site, um, there are a lot of printable stuff because I started as a classroom teacher and um, yeah, that was my, my thing for a long time was things that you could print. Um, I use Adobe. Uh, so I use like Photoshop and Illustrator. I know there are a million alternatives that are not expensive and that are easy yeah. to learn, but that's just what I've always used. Yeah. Um, and yeah for so for the printouts that's what i that's what i use and then for the games i have to say that i in 2019 i enrolled on a web developer course <laughs> with the idea wow, okay. of being able to make the games myself and then um during covid actually i made like a quiz <laughs> <laughs> a very basic quiz and that I was very proud of because it took me a very long time. But I soon realized that, yeah, the world of coding is not easy. So it's better to just find someone that's that's good at that. So, yeah, I, I tried to do the games myself, failed. Um, but then last summer, I, I was lucky enough, I was at a networking event for Digital Nomads and I, I met a developer that makes games. And so, yeah, basically I design them and then he puts them, makes them work kind of thing. Well, I'm very <laughs> impressed that you were going to get into the world of coding because yeah. that is, you know, 
when I started like this whole, I could, I don't, I mean, I call myself like a digital nomad, but I'm more of like, I, I stay in one place for a long time. A slow mad, they say. It's slow. Oh, there you go. Okay. New <laughs> word. So, but I, you know, I did all the things I tried blogging. I still blog a little bit on my website. I tried, um, co I thought about coding as well. I think I, I tried all, you know, all the things, right. And I, you quickly realize what you're good at, what you're skilled at and, um, do those things as the main part of what you do and then outsource what you're not good at. So yeah, absolutely. You know, that, and also, really yeah, it's so important that you enjoy it because I mean, for me it was, it's, I mean, I, we've had this conversation before, but it hasn't been plain sailing. Um, and so the fact that like, I always enjoy designing the games. I always enjoy making the materials kind of keeps me going when, you know, for the first, I don't know how long years I, you know, I, it wasn't financially uh, like yeah. worth it in a sense, but because I, I enjoyed it, I just kept going and thought, okay, well, you know, cool. I, I, and there are, you know, as you say, there are apps that make things easier. Like I would yeah. say for digital things, I mean, Canva is uh, wonderful. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. A lot of Adobe yeah, people don't like okay. Canva, mm. but you know, and also, um, Genially, as I've mentioned to you before, I think was is a good app um, for making lessons as well as they've got a lot of interactive features on there that you can that you can make uh, games out of. But I want to jump into the game, so let's do that now. Yeah. Is that okay? We'll, we'll jump in and take a look. So everyone that was like, okay, let's just like get to the games um, and see what what she's got. Yeah. Um, now okay. this is a resource that you know folks can go on. I know you've got a, a trial and stuff that people can use and check out. So yeah. let me just let me just clean up my screen here a little bit so that it's um, a little bit easier to see things. Okay, how about we do that? Yeah, and then um, I'll bump over here. So there is a link in the description of the video that will take you to a um, free trial uh, of what uh, Sarah's got. But I'm going to put in the chat a direct link to the games. Um, so if anyone's interested, you can go and check out, but, you know, go there after we're done here so that you can at least see sort of how the site works. Um, so tell us what we should do here. So click on online games. Yeah. So on, I mean, it's, it does have three categories, but if you click on just the online games, it takes you to everything. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's a mixture of things at the moment. There are quizzes, card games, board games, um, drag and drop things um so i love yeah. okay I, i'll just say i love this for which do you prefer for okay. um like a good sentence starter i think it's really fun and some of the lessons i've the curriculum i use has this stuff now these are like really simple things but you could like you know um kind of add more conversation to some of these things but especially for young learners i think it's really fun like which do you prefer and why do you prefer yeah exactly um, there's also another very similar card game called compare which is uh -huh. quite good for um you know this one is, is bigger smaller you know yeah um well. yeah so the idea is that a lot of them are are simple um but yeah Okay, so you uh, sort of like grammar, fill in the blank thing. Yeah, so there are some grammar thing. ones in there. Um, yeah, I like it. And yeah, so. So it seems like a lot of your games are based on cards and, and things like that. Would that be right? Yeah, so cards. There's also um, a board game and a snakes and ladders board game. And okay. also, um, there's the roll roll a character. You can roll a monster, roll um, okay. uh, an alien, this kind of thing. Also, roll a story is another one. Oh um, yeah, let's have a look at that one. So where that's under speaking. Do do do. Which one do you prefer? Uh, so there's roll and describe there, or roll a story there. Yeah. Roll a story. Yeah. So this is kind of fun. Like if you wanted sort of a story prompt for your students, you know, you could spin for the character and kids love this right to just like yeah not sort of not know what they're going to get yeah and um you know yeah so you can keep spinning find a bag of money so the characters are on a ship and they find a bag of money so that's a fun a fun prompt yeah yeah all right cool and so you can browse the games here vocabulary mm -hmm. speaking grammar but there's also i mean you've also got all these like 
resources here, right? Under browse. Yeah. So this is more for, you know, printable things. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. not as suitable for the online classroom. Um, well, the, the only thing is that they're not color. So they're okay. I don't know. I mean, maybe, but yeah. Mary I says, these are great. Thanks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, they're, they're, I think they're simple, they're fun, they're, you know, sometimes what's daunting about some of the more advanced games is like, I got to learn how to play it first. Um, yeah. Sometimes it can be a little complicated. I think these are like really easy to just like slot into a lesson if yeah. you kind of, because I'm just thinking from a, an online teacher's perspective, okay, I've got my lesson up, I've got the student there, like I want a system that's easy, because if it's not easy, I'm just not going to use it. It's If it's not something that if it's something I'm going to have to go and search for in the middle of a lesson and it's going to be complicated, it's harder to want to do it. Right. Cause like you don't have yeah. much time. So I think exactly. a good system is to maybe like save, if you're going to use these games, you know, bookmark this. And, um, a lot of online classrooms will let, will have like built in browsers so you can, you know, bookmark that and just bring it up. Um, mm. how, how do you use them? Do you, they're all web-based, right? So you just kind of yeah. share yeah, screen yeah. to the page. Yeah, I share the screen um, and okay. yeah, go from there. But um, so a lot of them, yeah, that you can you can select the topic from the site. So if you have a look at the board game, for example, or or any of them, um, then at the side. Oh right, cool. Okay, then, so you can add, uh, ah okay. So there there are pictures, but then if you click the drop down menu. Yes, I am doing that. Can you see the? Ah, uh, okay. It doesn't show up on the on the video, I don't think. But yeah, yeah no. there, are, there are about I don't know fifty or so different. Yeah, there's tons. So level one, it actually this is great. So if you were mm -hmm. wondering about advanced learners or things like that, you know, if you go to level five jobs, like let's have a look at this one. Um, yeah. This is a little bit like more advanced, so you can just play simple yeah so yeah. you just strike the counter you roll the dice and then if you click on the thing if you click on the where you've landed yep oh it, okay it makes it bigger so you can oh, see oh that's yeah. really cool okay great that's cool sarah i didn't i wouldn't have thought that that's cool neat yeah and then there's so much vocabulary around that that's why i think like one or two games can really like yeah, yeah, I mean, sometimes I spend the whole lesson playing this game. I mean, it depends how often they get sixes, but <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, because you can really, you can tailor it to yeah. you know, whatever says, um, point you're teaching or or whatever you're trying to, to do. So that's the idea that they're, that they're versatile enough that you can, um, yeah. you can adapt to them. Yeah. I think teachers need simple you know as andrew says using more complicated games you need to explain them and that takes yeah. time simple and intuitive is great so great cool gustav says i like the role the story and the board games and julie says fun yeah they're yeah. really fun and they're simple and and honestly they're if anyone has any suggestions or anything like on the website there's a contact form so yeah i love receiving ideas and things from from people so yeah and you are a teacher and you've made it super super affordable um yeah you know, well so hopefully um it's like four pounds a month or something like that yeah for the, <laughs> so it's really yeah. affordable guys if you want to you know <laughs> jump in um, while it's at a great price i think it's well worth it for really lots of games that are really fun and and will um add some variety to your lesson so i think that's really great mm -hmm. Cool. Did I share everything that on the site there? Did, was there anything else that you wanted me to share, Sarah? No, I, I mean, I guess I just invite anyone to have a look and play around. And actually, yeah, you can sign up to the seven day free trial. But even if you don't sign up, the first, it's mainly animals because it's in alphabetical order, but the first one of each game is available to to everyone. So anyone can can play oh, okay. around and, and see you know what it is i think i think actually the roller story is 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 available without signing up so that's a great yeah. one so if you're mm. watching go and maybe in your next class try it if you've never mm. introduced a game to your class uh to your classroom or to your students try it you know just see okay you're going to share the screen bring it in however you whatever your system is 
um, try it and, uh, you know, check it out and, and give her feedback. Sarah's open to suggestions and um, I know she would love to hear from you. So ELT experiences. Hi all and great to see you, Tim and Sarah. Good to mm -hmm. see you too. Um, how do I find teacher versus students games? Ah, well, actually, I mean, my games are all one to one, so I always play against my <laughs> my students. Okay, yeah. Um, so, but if you have any ideas of other ones, I, I'm I'm open to it. But yeah, I mean, for example, yeah, I always play the board games as well. I always play the memory games as well. You know, um, I always. Yeah ask my students to ask me questions <laughs> yeah that's great yeah. that's such a good way of, of teaching for sure mm. cindy cindy answers thank you sarah beautifully done i love using online games in my lessons oh great i'd love to know cindy what how, what games do you use how do you use them um well very good so i think we covered everything sarah did we i wanted to sort of talk about your journey, I think it's always fun to hear from, you know, my audience loves to hear other teachers' experiences. And I love people that transition from teaching like one-on-one -on -one classes to being, you know, owning their own business or like yeah. creating products and things like that. I think it's really exciting. And a lot of people are really interested in that because it can create more, more revenue for yourself so that you're not just tied to trading time for money. Mm. Um, which is what a lot of us are doing when we're just teaching classes. So Julie says, I always play a game at the end of a class as a review. Cool. But I think I will start to incorporate games right into the lesson as well. Yeah. Or even the beginning of the lesson, I think, would be maybe a starting place that I'm thinking for myself. It's a fun mm. way to just, you know, like the sort of which would you rather. Mm. Um, some of my older students, like I... I've asked some fun sort of which would you rather questions like would you rather be stranded on a desert or stranded on a beach and mm -hmm. you know, what are your reasons or would you rather lose your eyesight or your hearing or you know things that can be yeah. more complicated for for higher level students mm -hmm. so great all right yeah. well there is one question are you are you able to embed games on a third website i don't think so but i don't know much about that so maybe you can <laughs> tell Let me, see me what you think what he's talking more. about are you able to embed games on third websites do you mean yeah i think for proprietary sake of your games like you you have to host them and they're not anything that people can take from yeah your site. there isn't um uh, yeah so i don't i don't maybe if you if we'll hang out for another minute or so here but if you want to expand on that question I think that's what you're asking, but I could be wrong. Um, cool. So what's next for Gru Languages? Um, yeah, so, okay, lots more games on the horizon. I have a list of like 50 that I want to, to get done this summer. Um, so yeah, that. For the worksheet side, I, I, I want to start doing projects, which I haven't, which I haven't done before. Okay. Uh, so there's that. And yeah, I think just um, getting feedback from what, what's there already, trying to improve on things. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be- Growing the site really, right? Um, I was yeah, saying. yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, mm. I really like the simplicity of your website and content. I have a bit of a technical question. Which service did you use to build your site? Oh yes, WordPress? Ah, uh, yes, okay. So <laughs> I do use WordPress. Yeah, the, the games are, uh, the games aren't built directly in WordPress. They're hosted on another in another place, and then <laughs> yeah, sort of embedded not on your site. Entirely sure um, of the details, but yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you're a WordPress user. Yeah, I have my main yeah. my main main site on WordPress as well. Um, hi everyone. Hi, Young Learners Interactive Library. Cool. I like your name. I'm curious what you do. Um, and, you know, before we go here, if anyone is watching, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, and you'd like to come on, um, it's not painful, right, Sarah? <laughs> I'd love to interview anyone. Actually, any this is my first uh, live interview. I mean, my Oh, first well, let's give Sarah a round of applause. Interview. So <laughs> there was a moment where I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, I was a bit yes, nervous. Yes, actually, backstory, I messaged Sarah. Sarah messaged me. <laughs> wanted me to check out her site and I messaged back and said, I want to interview you. And she said, 
I'm not sure, but okay, we'll give it a try. So I really appreciate you coming on yeah. and you did a really, really great job. And um, I'm sure everyone's uh, enjoyed chatting with you and me about games and, and you know, what you're doing. I just think it's really awesome. So I wanted to. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, I knew I had to say yes, because it's a great opportunity. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really one for, for on camera things, but it's good. It's good to get out of your comfort zone. So. Absolutely. So if you're watching, you want to share your story, you don't have to have a website selling games, but you could, you know, just uh, come on and chat about your, your online teaching experience. If you've worked for a company or you're going independent or you're learning about marketing or you're you know wanted to share your tips or you know learn from learn from your experience type of things um everyone would be grateful and it's always fun to to learn from others so um great thanks everybody for watching i'm going to let you go now sarah thanks for being on the show and yeah thanks for having me okay right. thank you thanks sarah bye well, that was great. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And I like to keep the lives to around a half an hour so that they're viewable. I know that everybody is busy. And so I wish you a wonderful day of teaching if that's what you're doing, or if you are doing other things, hope you have a wonderful one and have a great week. And I will see you next week, same time, same place with another great interview. Take care, everyone.